Ghana kidnapped us. What? We were kidnapped and taken. Wow. Yep. So you moved from United States and you started a tilapia farm in Ghana. That's right. Uh, never experimented with agriculture or anything like that in the United States. Mm -hmm. Our family has invested in Ghana, have employees, have training mm -hmm. schools, have all these things. And we have documentation that we are descendants from the transatlantic slave trade mm -hmm. and that our DNA shows that we have come from this country. Mm -hmm. So for our situation and the black diaspora situation, when you know that we are descendants of the transatlantic slave trade and we are genetically brother and sister. Yeah. Why is it hard for you? You regret getting stuck here in Ghana. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I go by the name of myself and I. Epic it was. Remember to like and share to this amazing video. Thank you so much for subscribing, liking, and sharing to this amazing content. I'm here with Cameron. Cameron. In it. <laughs> In it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. So um, I'm from Texas. Okay. Yeah. And what are you doing in Ghana? Oh, I'm living my best life here in Ghana. You're living your best life here in Ghana? Yeah. How did you get to know Ghana and you're living here your best life? Yeah, in Ghana. How did you get to know Ghana? Sure. So I came and visited in 2017 to visit my sister and her husband. They're part of the embassy community. Okay. Um, me and my husband and my family always talked about living abroad. We, okay. we, you know, but so I came to visit just to, to hang out with her and see everything. I really fell in love with the country. Wow. Um, I loved seeing black faces everywhere. Wow. And so when I went home, I told my family, you know, we're going to move. We're going to move to Ghana. Wow. And we were planning on leaving the country we didn't know where uh when we turned 40 at the mm -hmm. time we were like 35 okay. um but we didn't know where so when i came in 2017 mm -hmm. i said i think ghana is the place is the place so in 2020 finally we made preparation to come and visit wow. we brought uh, it was my husband myself my youngest daughter mm -hmm. and i mean my oldest daughter and my youngest son we all mm -hmm. four came uh in march of 2020 and then the COVID uh, pandemic Game. happened. Wow. The country went through lockdown mm -hmm. and we couldn't leave. Ghana kidnapped us. What? We were kidnapped and taken to the United States <laughs> and then we got kidnapped and, and we got stuck here. So? Do you regret getting stuck here in Ghana? No. I, I think it was a blessing. I, I to tell stuck it, here in Ghana? Yes. I tell everyone we were literally delivered here. I think that with the plans that we were making to relocate here when we turned 40, that was gonna, that was like five years into the future four or five years into the future okay. and so when we got stuck in 2020 it was just like better better now than later okay. and it just happened so our our vision of living here happened four years earlier than intended by accident wow has ghana changed you in a way yes i think ghana being on the african continent mm -hmm. has made me more confident in wow. my blackness wow. i think living in the united states we have to code switch so in in the united states i have to be western acceptable okay from the way maybe i wear my hair the way i carry myself how mm. how i talk you know yeah. and so uh since being here i don't have to do that i can just be myself and so being in Ghana has allowed me to be more courageous and bold in my identity as a wow. black woman. And that's something that I, I, I greatly value that I didn't have the opportunity to have in the United States. Wow. Wow. That, that is just a wow to me because it's something that um, most people will are praying for to live their best life here. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're living your best life. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Have you ever visited um, or visit um, Indian tourist sites in Ghana? Of course, we went to the slave ports. They call them slave castles, but I don't mm. give that area the dignity of calling it a castle. It was literally a slave yes, port yes. and a slave dungeon. How, how did it feel when you were there? Um, it's a sad, oh. disgusting, but feeling of perseverance. When you think about I am here because my ancestors had to go through this passage and endure the things that they endured to make it all the way to 2023 for them to have the product that is me. Mm -hmm. um, it's empowering. Yeah, so it's, it's sad, but at the same time, it just resonates in you how 
purposeful you are or how purposeful I am mm -hmm. and uh, all the great things that I am accomplishing accomplishing despite oh. the my ancestors history yeah. hmm it's deep you don't take it like that try to visit the castle she said it's not a castle. Not a castle. Right? It's, a, it's the slave port, slave dungeon, where they did physical human trafficking. Mm -hmm. There was no king there, so it's not a castle. It's just a place where they held human beings in the most inhumane conditions possible and um, tortured and raped and then stole them and sent them to another country and stripped them away from their whole identity. <laughs> so that, that's what that place is. But I think that everyone should go, especially Ghanaians. I think that it's, it's interesting that there's so many people who have live in this country, you know, they'll never really leave this country, but haven't even experienced some of the things in their own backyard, such as a slave castle. And them not going to that slave castle mm -hmm. helps to create this division between the African American or black uh, mm -hmm. diaspora community, because you're not going there to realize that these were your people too. too yeah. This is where we have the common connection that it was literally families being torn apart, yeah, sure. um, you know, children being kidnapped, wives being kidnapped. And so this is where we all um, are connected from. And so it's your history mm -hmm. just as much as it's my history. history. We, are, we are in. So we have to find ourselves. Well, um, I mean, we've been talking about all this and I feel like um you've been in ghana for a while mm -hmm. and what are some of the projects that you think you can do mm -hmm. to help the country whilst you are here as well are you leaving your whole life here or you just go back no it's like i'm asking you too much questions right? no 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 <laughs> this, this is our home okay. i uh when i was in texas and i okay. still do i have a brokerage a real estate brokerage in texas that i still run okay i am a third generational realtor now unlike in in the state in uh, ghana okay. in the united states it's a profession that you go through training and licensing for mm -hmm. so i think that it's a huge accomplishment but i'm a, a third generational realtor who has uh, her brokerage in texas and mm -hmm. I've since come and established a brokerage here. Mm -hmm. I'm also an executive director for the Ghana Real Estate Professional Association, oh, wow. known as GREPA. We are the key association that helps to bring professionalism mm -hmm. and ethics to the real estate industry. And so that's, that's our platform. Um, wow. So I do that. I also help my husband uh, to market and run his building inspection wow. company because that is something, building inspections I think is something that is greatly missing here uh, just to provide the most uh, efficient and quality builds and for you to be really purchasing properties that are of value and not deficient or a hazard. Mm -hmm. So I help him with that. And then um, we also run a off-grid aquaponics farm in the eastern region where we raise both tilapia and vegetation all in one whole ecosystem. Wow. One in ecosystem. You understand. Uh, do you say tilapia? Tilapia, yes. So you have a tilapia farm? Yep. Wow. Yep. So you moved from the United States and you started a tilapia farm in Ghana? That's right. Uh, never experimented with agriculture or anything like that in the United States there's just not a lot of um, I wouldn't say opportunities but there's a lot of restrictions to try to grow your own food in the United States mm -hmm. they really don't want you to do that they want you to be dependent mm -hmm. on grocery stores and all those things and so it was always a passion of mine to be a self sufficient mm -hmm. as possible and so when we got here and we acquired our land it was a a major passion of mine and project to get our farm up and running so yeah at any given time we raise about 600 tilapia and can maintain about 2400 mm -hmm. vegetables inside of our greenhouse wow that is really inspiring thank you so what makes you what inspire you to start that um wow. i just I don't ever want to go hungry. Okay. <laughs> I don't want those that I love to go hungry. And the Most High has gifted us with the knowledge and the resources to be able to supply our own food. And so even if I didn't have the land and the money and the capital to put up to mm -hmm. get the aquaponic system, it still would have been a passion to at the very least have a small little garden. You know, you can, mm -hmm. you can grow um, mints and herbs in your kitchen. That's you can true. grow mushrooms. We also are starting to grow mushrooms. You can grow mushrooms um in just a small space yeah so there's yeah, so many true. opportunities to grow your own food to be uh self-sustainable and that's what uh, i'm most passionate about wow 
well someone out there will be like how difficult was it for you to start because you've never thought of this before mm -hmm. even if you have you've never experienced it That's right. so how is your experience so far in this it it's a learning process mm -hmm. uh, we've had casualties with our fish uh, we went through you know diseases and all types of things but mm -hmm. you just learn and uh, it's a great experience I, that that we're having and and did have and getting it done it wasn't terribly difficult in my opinion, opinion. because we had a vision i think mm. the the biggest thing about achieving your goals is to have a clear vision of of what that looks like and then okay. to take small steps uh every day uh and as income allows to achieve those wow. so you know first we bought the land the land was just sitting there growing wild for wow. for a year then like after a forest yeah <laughs> <laughs> then, then after that we're like oh after we build our homes we're yeah. like oh let's let's you know build the the greenhouse and then you buy the fingerlings and you do these things and it's just a progress and over time you end up having something really beautiful beautiful that you can be proud of wow i'm so proud of you like you're doing this to also inspire other um african americans and diaspora out there that you can invest in africa specific you are in ghana at this moment so you can invest in ghana come on right yeah wisely wisely <laughs> when you say wisely why you say wisely i think that and and i've had lots i've heard lots of horror stories mm -hmm. fortunately we haven't been a victim to any of any of the the scams and the types of things mm -hmm. that can happen but you know a lot of times uh the diaspora will come here with these big dreams and they're mm -hmm. big beautiful dreams about doing something wonderful in the mm -hmm. country but if you don't connect with the right people, people or if you don't do your due diligence and research then yeah. you can easily be taken advantage of and scammed and so what you thought was going to be an investment and what people thought was going to be investment has sent many many people back home to the u.s broke really yeah you know you can come here without a good vision and without the good contacts you can run through your whole life savings and go back to the united states penniless if you do not invest wow. wisely wow i think it's my first time hearing this news like a lot of people have left because they like it didn't go well for them and they are hungry now and wow, yeah wow that's you know it, it doesn't surprise me that you haven't heard that but i'm not exaggerating okay. on on it happening i think we all have this romantic idea of what we can do when we come back to mm -hmm. africa or to ghana and we don't like to share the stories when we felt uh, take yeah negative or taken advantage of so a lot of people go back home mm -hmm. with their tails tucked between their legs in shame because they feel as though they failed mm -hmm. but it's not that they they failed by truly any fault of themselves it's just mm -hmm. they didn't have the right systems the right system. um, set in place so yeah it, it happens a lot do you have any way of letting people to know that this is the right source and this is how we can help you do you have any way of that hmm I mean, we, we work as a direct contact with, there's lots of people through our YouTube channel, mm -hmm. the, um, the Big Sankofa who contact us. They just see what we're doing. And so we are happy to advise them on certain things, okay. especially since we have backgrounds in real estate and in self-sustainability and in building inspections, we can help on that. Okay. But there's a lot of great Facebook groups um, that I'm a part of, not administrator of any kind of way, but that I just also joined okay. where we can all connect and share our stories and and get insight and help from one another who have actually had the experience of, mm. of living here so if someone's wanting to relocate here i think the first step is to watch as many youtube channels mm -hmm. and uh, subscribe to as many youtube channels okay. of people who are covering the stories of the mm -hmm. diaspora and yeah. returning uh and then also to join as many facebook groups that also cater to our demographic and then the next thing to do once you build up enough confidence you saved your money and got your passport and your vaccinations wow. and your visa people don't even know you need these things sometimes do you, do you think it's very difficult like when you were coming to ghana was it difficult for you it was not difficult for me because I was blessed to have a sister who had already went oh, through that process. Okay. But as I'm communicating with other people, I'm learning that they have no idea. Oh, a lot mm. of people just think, I just need a passport and I come over here. Mm. And they buy they buy their, their ticket you. and then they realize they don't have their yellow fever yeah. vaccine. Okay. They didn't get a visa, you know. Um, and then when the whole COVID thing was going on, you had to have your COVID test before 48 hours. They weren't prepared. Um, 
so it can be difficult if you're mm -hmm. not knowledgeable and connected to the right um, source. But for me, it, it wasn't. Wow. Well, it's so nice to be nice on Epic It Was. If you have one question that you think I did not ask you, what would be that question? Hmm. So as she is thinking about it, remember to subscribe and like to this amazing video. <laughs> and also you can always um, reach out to their YouTube channel. Um, they have so many great contents over there. Go like and share. All about duping. If they have duping you or if, you, if you've never ever been duping before, trust me, go to their, um, their channel. Check on them. Watch videos that concern about you coming to Ghana, Africa. As well as you are watching my as well too. You understand? So please, <laughs> you still? Okay, yeah, I don't know. Maybe not the most provoc that provoking, uh, provoking question, but something that I, a question I have in the back of my head that I have yet to answer, is what would need to happen for me to leave here? Because I, I love Ghana. I can't envision ever wanting to go back to the United States. So sometimes I like to play with the question of what would have to happen here. Okay. that would make me want to go back what's going on with the government okay. and the way that they're handling uh societal issues mm -hmm. and the way they're making it difficult uh for the diaspora specifically um black americans and people from the transatlantic slave trade to come back um is probably something that could make me have to go back to the united states but are you willing to be a citizen of ghana yeah, I would love to be a citizen. I personally believe that I should, the diaspora community should be granted citizenship without all of the loopholes. I mean, if have I'm, you ever reply, apply for that? So it's not as simple as just applying for it. You have to be a, you have to get your residency. You have to maintain that for X amount of years. They want to see bank statements. They want to see all, get all in your business. And don't you think it's really important to I get? I do that? not think that it's important. To give all that information but why it's, it's like um, me going to states united states so this for is, example this is i hear that argument and i'm no, gonna no, tell, i'm just no no i've heard that argument and i'm gonna tell you the difference okay See, so let me learn then you tell me the difference okay so um if i'm in the united states and mm -hmm. i need a citizenship mm -hmm. um in uh, america mm -hmm. in the states um i i think you have to go through a whole lot oh, of things it's a lot of things you have to go through more than even in Ghana. Sure. Mm -hmm. So why don't you think it's important for them uh, for them to let you go through all that mm -hmm. process for you to become a citizen of Ghana? Sure. So at the risk of offending people, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just going to say it very clear. Mm -hmm. Clear. The reason is is that the United States has set up policies and systems that help its citizens. Okay. They can help you with housing they can help you with food they help okay. you with health care there are so many benefits of being a u.s citizen okay. that ghana does not provide to its own legal citizens okay. so for you to say if you get a citizenship here in ghana why can't i get a citizen in the united states if i'm a citizen in ghana can i go to ghana or can you even go to ghana and tell them hey pay my my housing pay my food give me free health care you can't. No, there is a free health care that I know, but housing is something that I don't really know about that. And it is my belief that Ghana doesn't do enough for its citizens. Okay. So if you were to go to the United States and you were penniless, you would be a drain on their economy. Wow. If I come to Ghana and I'm penniless, penniless, I don't hurt anyone. I'm not going to be taking resources from citizens. I'm just going to be homeless sitting on the street. Yeah. But if you go to the United States and homeless on, this, on the streets, it costs taxpayers money. Mm -hmm. Me being homeless in Ghana doesn't hurt anyone but me. Yeah. You being homeless in the United States hurts the whole economy. Wow. So that is the reason why <laughs> it should be easier for people to get citizenship here. I'm not coming here to be a drain mm -hmm. on the country. I'm here to help. So when people are coming to help the country and the economy, it should be easier to, to get these types of uh, citizenship. But don't you think it's easy, if it is easy, it could be a runoff, like things could be like, oh, it's easy to be a citizen in Ghana is get this, get that done, and then you are good to go. You understand? Um, you know, getting all those kind of things, information that you need before be, be part of being a citizen in Ghana, mm -hmm. it's something that is well trusted. Are we trusting on giving the citizenship to this person? 
just in one day she oh. or he came no, so not like that. you understand no, uh-huh so just oh i showed up give me citizenship yeah. but I, i've come here i've established businesses mm-hmm. here the place that we're sitting at right now this is my sister's business mm-hmm. our family has invested in ghana have employees have training mm-hmm. schools have all these things and we have documentation that we are descendants from the transatlantic slave trade mm-hmm. and that our dna shows that we have come from this country mm-hmm. so for our situation and the black diaspora situation when you know that we are descendants of the transatlantic slave trade and we are genetically brother and sister yeah. why is it hard for me i'm not making that argument for european or chinese yeah. or lebanese i'm saying it I'm saying me as a black American who has documentation that I was kidnapped from this country. Country. I have returned. I have made every effort to come here and establish myself and help the country. Why are you treating me like I'm a Chinese immigrant or a European or a foreigner? I'm not a foreigner. I'm your sister. Yeah, Yeah, I think I, I, I support you in that. And I think you have rights to that. And I think... The government is pleading on you to do, um, you know, your work and make it work. I mean, uh, our brothers and sisters are coming back to the motherland and they are coming back to invest. They are coming back to make Ghana a better, um, more than better as we are in. So I think it's, it's the right time we also, you know, make it worth it for them to come.